The rationale for it is to bring together 30 of the top thought leaders in this very interesting and challenging condition to see if we can get groups to work together to identify what the fundamental problems are in addressing the disease, how best to manage it, and particularly to deal with divergence of care on different sides of the Atlantic. It's a very, very different concept than the usual meeting. We're not simply inviting people to attend the meeting to learn about the disease. We're inviting the thought leaders to come and get together and challenge each other to come up with a better way of getting information and collectively putting our heads together and perhaps our databases of patient outcomes to think of what studies we want to do collaboratively in a way that hasn't been done before. Collaboration is something that's a challenge for many centers. We think that we want to be the best at what we do and we want to be branded that way. But the reality is that sometimes, particularly in diseases that aren't that common, what we have to do is to band together, pool our patients, pool our ideas, and we all get to share in the reward of better information and better outcome. HCM is a disease that's uh, had a lot of controversy since it was first diagnosed in the 1950s, both in terms of what it is, its management, um, and that controversy persists until today. So there's a great deal of difference of opinion as to how we decide to put in a life-saving defibrillator for patients who are at risk of sudden death. How do we calculate that risk of sudden death? How does it meet a threshold where we finally decide it's a high enough threshold to put in a defibrillator, which while it can be life-saving, can also have complications of its own. So these are things hopefully that the group will get together, challenge each other, and then on a go-forward basis come up with collaborative solutions that will benefit everybody. There are very different guidelines in North America and in Europe for how to decide when to put a defibrillator in patients at risk of sudden death. I was involved in the writing committee for the 2011 American College of Cardiology American Heart Association guidelines. There were guidelines in 2014 published by the European Society of Cardiology that are now very different. So how do we make decisions on individual patients when these guidelines are so different? Indeed, for a review article we wrote, we polled over 20 HCM experts on how they apply the guidelines, and experts in the United States and Canada don't necessarily follow the American guidelines, and experts in Europe don't always follow the European guidelines. Sometimes they agree on the decision, but for different reasons. So this really isn't a rational way of managing patients, Often the reason for that disagreement is there isn't enough information. So how do we bring people together to get the information we need so collectively we make decisions the same way and then we teach people who aren't as expert in HCM to do the same. One of the most challenging times I ever had as a doctor looking after HCM patients is looking after a 14-year-old young woman who had some risk factors for hypertrophic cardiomyopathy but didn't meet the guideline recommendations for putting in a defibrillator. Even though I've dealt with this disease for a long time and was involved in writing the guidelines and we did everything right, this is a young woman who suffered sudden death because much of the sudden death occurs in people who are at relatively low risk and we're just not good enough in identifying that risk. So part of my motivation is to improve the quality of information we have. So we have fewer people who die suddenly and unnecessarily because we're just not yet good enough at making decisions. The top goal of this summit is to get people who have differences of opinions to work together to find common ground 
to make recommendations. It's particularly true in how to evaluate the risk for sudden death and decide when to put in a defibrillator, how to deal with other important arrhythmias that can cause stroke, and to then create a roadmap so that we have common guidelines for different parts of the world and we show people how to apply those guidelines in a uniform manner.